Hey, welcome back to Tripod's Garage. This is Tripod and we are in Colorado, Loveland, Colorado. And this weekend is our Murph, which is Rocky Mountain Rep Rep Festival. It's mostly about 3D printers, and um, but we are going to um, infiltrate it with a laser, not just any laser. It is the Commarker B6 MOPA 60 watt fiber laser. So we're going to uh, show it and see what people think about it. Because as far as I know, Besides light burn, we are the only ones here with the laser and let's see if we could create an impact here and see what people think about lasers oh. in a 3D printing event. What's this? Mrs. Tripod's actually in one of my videos. Ha, oh, whoever thought. Hey, let's take a look at this awesome laser enclosure by Carmarker. This is actually specifically designed for the B6. It fits perfectly. It has an LED light that's powered by USB. The door actually has sensors on it so if it gets opened up it'll automatically pause the laser job and during all my testing here at the event i did not see any laser leakage which was really nice so this is perfect for bringing to an event also in the back you'll see that it has a porthole and that is so you can exhaust air out however um since i'm not by a window or anything i brought a portable fume extractor with me and during all my testing here, I did not see any smoke coming out. So apparently it worked very well. Now, Comarca was uh, kind enough to send me a ton of dog tags. And here are the settings that I'm using for the dog tags. We're looking at a speed at 5,500 millimeters per second, frequency 300, pulse uh, 45, max power 75, and line interval at 0 0.003. I was able to complete a dog tag in about 2 minutes and 20 seconds on one side. I wanted to optimize my settings for speed and quality. Because just in case if you want to do this at a show, that's what you're going to need to do. Uh, these did come out really hot so i let it cool down but as you can see it came out really nice and for both sides it took about five minutes but i was basically only offering one side for people now let's talk about poker chips specifically the 3d printed ones this is a project that was started out by k2 kevin he decided that hey let's start making some maker chips and he has this whole little ecosystem on how to create these on a 3D printer. And I was like, wow, this is such a fantastic idea. Typically during these 3D printing conventions, people would just hand out, um, you know, stickers. But he wanted to give it a little bit more of a personalization here. And what you can do is just go ahead and put your logo on one side and QR code on the other to your social media or whatever, whatever you're selling. And it's great advertising. And he has so many other things, lots of tool organizations. So if you are into 3D printing, I suggest giving K2 Kevin a follow and print out some of his files. Now, I really, really love the idea of these maker chips. And I thought, well, what can we do for lasers? So I hopped onto Amazon to see what I could find for, well, poker chips. I want to emphasize this. You are following these instructions at your own risk because I do not know what type of composition these chips are made out of. It just says clay composite and it has some type of resin or and or plastics that might be embedded in this. So you are definitely doing this at your own risk. Please make sure that you're wearing proper PPE in a well ventilated area and using a fume extractor with an enclosure. I just wanted to throw that out there that I do not know what materials these are made out of. So please use extreme caution. Now with all the legal disclaimers and everything else out of the way, let's talk about the settings. After extensive testing on these chips, 
I found these to be the best to get a decent marking on. So let's go ahead and see what they are. I have a front and a back here, so and they're going to be identical. So let's go ahead and see what they are. The speed is going to be 1500 millimeters per second, frequency 10, max power 40, Q pulse 200, and we're going to do a line interval of 0 0.0200, and we're going to do three passes. And this is going to be identical for the QR code side. Now I only did this with a jig here, and you're going to see me flip over the chip and just go ahead and um, you know turn off one side and then turn on the other, and that way we could just do this in just two separate passes. Best way to do this is to make a jig that could hold maybe like a dozen of these, and um, hopefully I will have one shortly to be able to test with. I found that also the contrast is really good for these chips compared to other ones. I did try solid colors, but the white definitely was able to get the most contrast out versus solid other colors. Since this was inspired by a K2 Kevin, I decided to come up with a new name for these. I call them laser chips. Yes, laser chips. I also wanted to run this by K2 Kevin and uh, get his blessing on the name as well. And I find it also very odd that uh, when I presented this to him, he said that uh, they were just talking about laser engraved poker chips. And just a day later, I showed him a picture of one. How ironic is that? Now, as you can see, the, the contrast is improving just ever so slightly by each pass. I did not notice anything beyond a third pass, and frankly, you might just be able to get away with one pass on these chips. And this is definitely a personal choice. Um, again, two or three passes is more than enough, maybe even one. And let's go ahead and take a look. Yeah, nice sharp contrast, looks great. However, it wasn't really centered. And that's something I did notice about these poker chips is that there is some inconsistencies with the, the color, but not the weight. So if you, uh, want, I would suggest making your image a little bit smaller so it centers better and not go towards the borders. And you can kind of see it on the corners here for the QR code. They're off a little bit and mind you that I've actually been doing the same jig for a while and this is definitely an inconsistency of the chip manufacturing process. So go ahead and just uh, shrink up your your logo on one side and the QR code on the other and hopefully that won't affect you then. And again the QR code could link to anything that you want. It could be linked to your social media, your website, more specifically about the product that's being sold, basically anything you want. Or you could just create another image on the reverse or maybe it's for real poker and you could just have the dollar value on there. Now let's take a look at both sides. Wow, as you can see, it's just very crisp and clear, very legible. Again, just maybe drop the image size a little bit, but wow, I love the contrast of these chips. And if you make a jig that holds, like I said, about a dozen, you could crank these out very quickly in large batches. These were an absolute hit. Uh, unfortunately, I only had like about 100 to hand out. In comparison, the maker chips, I had about 700 and those also went almost all in the first day as well. Now when you go to a convention or a makeup fair, yeah, you can make some serious money. Since this was sponsored by Commarker, they gave me all the dog tags. I personalized a dog tag for anyone that wanted one. And I would say about 95% of people that came by asked how much they were. And I said, well, they're free. I did query everyone that came by and they said that they would be willing to pay up to $10 per dog tag. And just think about the revenue that you could have made at a show like this. Everyone wanted one. And I did actually get a couple tips. That was kind of nice. Now I did place myself in basically the aisle because I didn't want anyone to mess around with the equipment. And I also thought that it would be nice for people to see their dog tag laser engraved right in front of them. Basically, I had a line to my left, and as they uh, told me what they wanted on there, I had them go to my right and stand behind the crack that was on the floor. That way, they didn't bump the table or anything, 
And basically the only breaks I ever got was going to the bathroom. And uh, Mrs. Tripod did fill in and sit there just to make sure the computer and uh, you know the laser wasn't touched while I was not there for my bathroom breaks. Now the dog tags that Commarker provided are uh, for 10 pieces is $17. And if you were to sell these for seven to ten dollars each at an event, well, you can make some serious profit very quickly. So rough calculations, if I sold uh, 350 during this event at seven dollars each, my profit would be almost two thousand dollars for the two days. That's not bad, and that's just the dog tags alone. So as you can see, this could be a lucrative business. Well, that was, I would say very successful. I was busy both days. I think I've laser engraved about 350, 400 of these dog tags and I gave away almost all my chips. So yes, people were widely impressed with it. Never seen a fiber laser in action. And I definitely think it was very successful. I really want to thank uh, Commarker for the opportunity to present their machine here. And um, I would like to thank you for tuning in to Tripod's Garage. Please have a wonderful day, evening, or weekend, or whenever you decide to watch this video. Thanks again for tuning in, and we'll catch you the next time on Tripod's Garage. Hey, welcome back to Tripod's Garage. What the heck was that? It had some ass crack showing, but...